So this video is going to do a set covering problem and we're going to use the fire station problem as an example. So in this uh, example, we have that we have 16 zones or um, districts and we need to determine where to locate fire stations. Um, our criteria for being close enough so that if a fire happens, we are reachable in a reasonable amount of time is that we either need a fire station in our region, in our district, or next to it. So it needs to share a border. So that's what's called the pre-specified uh, criteria. Um, and that is you need to either have a fire station in your district or next to it. Our objective is to minimize the number of fire stations needed. That means we're assuming each station costs approximately the same amount to build. Um, and so let's formulate that as a set covering problem. And then in future slides, we'll, we'll solve these problems. All right, so what does this mean? We could say, well, a solution, a solution to the set covering, a feasible solution, which means it meets the criteria, but is not necessarily optimal, is not necessarily the minimum number of fire stations needed, is we can locate one in, in district two, and that would be good for all of these districts. We could also locate one in district four, eight, and that would be okay for all of those districts. Those are eight covers, eight, four, nine, 11, and 12, based again on this pre-specified criteria of having a fire station in it or next to it. We could then build in 10, and that would cover 10 and 14. We could build in seven, that would cover seven and 13. And we could build in 15, and that would cover 15 and 16. So what I just showed you is what's called a feasible solution to the set covering problem. It's feasible because the constraint that every district has a fire station in it or next to it is, is satisfied. It is not a optimal solution because you can imagine there's probably an easier or not an easier, a better uh, solution, meaning we could build fewer uh, fire stations and still cover um, all the regions. So again, in terms of terminology, this is feasible, but not optimal. All right, so we can represent um, this problem again as a set covering problem. Um, so if I build in one, we can say what, what other uh, districts does that cover? It covers one, two, four, and five. And we could do that for two, which covers one, two, three, uh, five, and six, and so forth. Um, and so you could think about that as the set covering problem. And then what we can do is we can convert this also to a graph. Um, and so how do we convert it to a graph is we take each uh, district with a node. And so we make them all nodes in a graph. Um, and then once we have them all having nodes in a graph, we will connect the nodes only if they're actually adjacent. So we're only gonna draw a line between um, ones if they're adjacent, which gives us this, um, graph um, problem. And a node then covers itself and any um, node that it has an arc coming out of. Um, so that's just a graph representation of this problem. Um, and then we can still continue to ask, what is the minimum size of a subset of nodes that covers all the nodes? Um, and so we can also represent this as an integer program. So um, this is an optimization model. And so how would we do that? Well, first of all, we need um, to denote our sets and our parameters. So our sets are nodes. For this case, we have a node one through 16. Parameters, remember, are things that are given. So we're not deciding anything. That's in this problem, the cost of locating a facility in node J. So we could say C of J. So we know the cost of building in node one, cost of building in node two, and so forth. That's our parameters. Our variable, what are we getting to decide is one, if node J is selected, XJ is zero otherwise. So this is called a binary variable. It can either be one or it could be zero. It means I either build or I don't build. One key thing here, um, as you do your homework and do the final exam, please be careful on explicitly defining what one and zero mean. Um, we usually denote that one means yes to do, go do something. So in this case, it's selected or built in um, zero otherwise, so I don't. But it would be just as correct to switch these around um, and use zero to denote I do build and one not. 
And so please be very explicit to say what does one represent in your problem and what does zero represent in your problem. So I'm going to formulate it as if x of 2 is 1, that means I build in uh, node 2. And then what are we trying to do? We're trying to minimize the total cost of building um, across them. So if you think about what is C1 times X1 means is if I build in location one, that becomes a one and I have to pay whatever the cost of building in node one is. If I don't build in location one, X1 is zero, therefore it doesn't matter how much it costs me. Um, I'm not building there, I'm not paying it. So that's what the objective function is. It's the sum over all the potential locations to build in times this one or zero binary variable times how much it costs to build there. And then if we did that with nothing else, the answer would be turn everything to zero, right? So the way to minimize this objective function if we have no constraints would be to say don't build anywhere. That's not feasible uh, because we do have constraints. We have these constraints that say a fire station has to be in a neighborhood or adjacent to it. All right, so we have this constraint. So this constraint says x1 plus x2 plus x4 plus x5 has to be greater than or equal to 1. I want you to think about what does that mean in the context of our fire station problem? If you've taken a operations research course, um, you may remember that these pluses, you can think of them if they're binary variables as or. So I'm going to repeat this. Um, I'm going to say we need to build in location one, or we need to build in location two, or we need to build in location four, or we need to build in uh, location five. And so what does that mean? That means we need to cover neighborhood one. We have to cover neighborhood one, and the only ways we can cover neighborhood one is we either need to build in one, two, four, or five. And at least one of those has to be built in, otherwise neighborhood one is not covered. So that's for neighborhood one. If I just had that, um, that would be great. Uh, neighborhood one would be fine, but neighborhood 16 would not have anything built in it because it costs something to do that. And so that's not the full set covering problem. Instead, we need another uh, constraint. So this one says we need to build in X1 or X2 or X3 or X5 or X6, at least one of those one, two, three, five, or six, at least one of those has to be built in. So what does that constraint enforce? That constraint enforces that two is covered because two is only covered if you either build in one, two, three, five, or six. You can build in more than one. So let's say we build in one and two, we're good, we're covered. Um, so this can be greater than one, but at least one of those have to be built in. So you can envision you would do this for each of the 16 different uh, zones because each of the 16 zones have to have a fire station in it or next to it. And so I'll just give you the last one. This is for 16, which says to cover 16, I either need to build in 16 or 13 or 15. At least one of those have to be built. In. Okay. Um, and then we're not quite done yet is we need a constraint for each of these variables that are zero or one. And this is actually a really important um, constraint, and this forces it to no longer be a strictly linear program. It's a integer linear program, or an IP for short, an integer program. The key here is if you've taken operations research by adding that you need now a binary variable, you're no longer able to use the simplex method to get the optimal solution. You're now in branch and bound um, territory or specialized solution approaches. Um, and the key thing here is anytime you add integers um, to an optimization problem, we can model much more interesting problems and that's great, but solution wise, it's much harder to get the optimal solution. But it is critical from a modeling perspective that we have this constraint. So this constraint is actually very important. The reason is if we don't have this constraint, uh, the computer could say uh, X3 is 0.7. What the heck does 0.7 mean? It means nothing. We only have defined a meaning is if x of 7 is 1 or 0. If it's 1, I build there. If it's 0, I don't. 0.7 means nothing, OK? And so it is actually very um, important that this constraint is um, included. 
um, and it forces us that the x variables are only zero or one. So that's the formulation of the set covering problem um, as an integer program. Um, and so let's now talk about this more generically or more generally. Um, so what do we have? We have the sets of potential facility locations. I'm gonna index them on J and there are N of them. And then I'm gonna have customer sites which are indexed on I and there are M of them. In the example we just did, there was only one set. The set of potential sites and the set of customer sites were exactly the same. Note that that doesn't have to be the case um, and you can instead have separate uh, sets for potentially where to locate things and the things that need to be covered. You also need to be given the following parameters. Remember parameters are given data, so that means that you don't get to decide them. You need to be given the cost of locating a facility at site J and you also need to be given um, the covering criteria. Um, and this I'm gonna write down is a set that's a binary um, parameter. So it is a parameter, it is a given piece of data. However, it's a binary one. So I'm gonna say it's one if facility located at site J can cover customer I and it's zero otherwise. So this is something we can calculate ahead of time based on the criteria. So what does that mean? So I'm just gonna go back a slide. What does this mean in terms of um, this problem? is that the AIJ um, of one to one is one. If I build in one, it covers one. Um, AIJ uh, of two, one to two is also one. And so you can think about the AIJs are hanging out in front of these X's here. Um, so again, those are parameters, they're given, there's something you can calculate ahead of time, a priori based on the data. So what are the decision variables? The decision variable is determining what we get to decide. And in this problem, we have a set of binary decision variables, which are one if a facility is located at site J, zero otherwise. So meaning zero, we don't build there. So those are our sets, parameters, and variables. In terms of the objective function and constraints, our objective function, remember, tells us how do we determine what's a good solution. And so in the set covering problem, we wanna minimize the total cost of building um, these facility locations. So we sum over all potential locations and CJ, remember, is a parameter. It tells us the cost of building and XJ is a binary variable that says I'm either building or not. So if I build, I get a one and I'm charged C of J. If X of J is zero, then I don't pay the C of J. And we sum that over all potential facility locations and we are gonna minimize that. So our goal is to find a solution that's the minimum total cost. Again, if we only have the objective function and no constraints, the answer would be don't build anywhere. All the XJs are zero. We need constraints because we need to force um, our solution off of zero. And so how do we do that? Um, this constraint is a generic representation of all the ones I just did for the um, fire station problem. And so it says that, first of all, if you say here, it says there is one uh, constraint for every M um, demand location. So in our example, there were 16 different uh, zones we need to cover. That means there were 16 different of these constraints. So you need a constraint for every uh, customer location that you need covered. And then what it says is all of them have to be covered. And so on the right-hand side, it's always greater than or equal to one. And on the left-hand side, it has these XJs, but this AIJ, this uh, binary parameter shows up. And this basically says which XJs show up in those constraints. So if I go back to the fire station thing, you see that not every XJ is showing up in this equation. That's because the only ones that show up are the ones that would cover location one. So five shows up because if I build in five, I do cover location one. If I build in two, I do cover location one. So one, two, four, and five show up because their AIJ value is one. However, X9 does not show up because nine, if I build there, does not cover one. And so that's what's going on in this constraint. So again, there's one constraint for every customer location that you need covered, and there are M of those. And then the other constraint is that for every uh, potential location 
um, that you build in, it's a zero one decision. You either can build or you can't, there's no like half building. So that's the set covering uh, formulation. 